thanks for joining today the introduction to the international space law and uh, myself the jack morvin creation deputy chairman international academy of space law in russia and national point of contact in india the space generation advisory council in support of the united nations program of space applications generally you know like the space law can be described as in a body of uh, law governing the space related activities the space law much uh, like uh, the general introduction international law and uh, the comprises uh, a variety of international agreements territories and uh, conventions and international general assembly resolutions as well as well as the uh, rules and regulations of international organization the term the space law is most often associated with with the rules the principles and standards of international law appearing in five international territories and five set of principles governing the outer space which have been developed under the auspices of united nations in in addition to these instru international instruments many states have the national legislation governing the space related activities the space law addresses a variety of matters such as for example the preservation of space and the, the earth environment most importantly and liabilities for the damage caused by the space objects and the settlement of dispute, disputes and uh, the rescue of astronauts and the sharing the information about potential danger in outer space and the use of space related technologies and international cooperation a number of fundamental principles guide to conduct of space activities including the notion of the space as province of all human kind the freedom of exploration and use of the outer space by all states without discrimination and the principle of non appropriation of the outer space the office provides the information and advice upon the request raised by anyone to go to the government or non governmental organization or general public on space law in order to promote the understanding acceptance and implementation of international uh under the united nations space and like governed by the international space law agreements concluded under the united nations and uh, the territory and the principles of governing the activities of space of states in the exploration and use of outer space including the moon and other celestial bodies the territory is the foundation of international space law for the signatory nations is like 108 in 2019 as on the territory presents the principles of space exploration operations actually the space activities are for the benefit of all nations of any country is free to explore the orbit and beyond uh, there is a you no know, no, any country africa australia india any country even europe or any alaska antarctica anybody they can explore they are free to explore the orbit and beyond there is no claim for sovereignty in the space no nation can own space actually the moon or any other celestial body and the weapon of mass destruction are forbidden in the orbit and beyond and the moon the planets and other celestial bodies can be used for only for the peaceful purpose any astronauts from any nation is an envoy of mankind and a signat signatory state must provide all the possible help to the astronauts when needed including emergency landing in the foreign country or sea or anywhere in the territory the signatory states are each responsible for their space activities including the power private commercial endeavors and most uh, provide the organization continuing the supervision and the uh, nations are responsible for damage caused by the the space objects and must avoid the contaminating the space and celestial bodies and the rescue agreement the agreement on rescue of astronauts and the return of the astronauts and the return of the space object launched into the outer space the signatory agree to take all responsibilities actions taken to help or rescue the astronauts in need and if applicable turn them to the nation from which they have launched actually accidentally the signatory is agree to help return the sponsoring the nation any space objects that land on the earth outside the country from which they they have been launched actually so the moon agreement the agreement is governed governing the activities of the states of on the moon and the other celestial bodies 
the agreement states that the celestial bodies can only be used for the peaceful purpose and that they should not be contaminated and uh, that you and should always be made and aware of any such station on non-earth body that if you resource the mining on the moon become feasible an international regime must be established to govern how those resources are obtained and used the international the united states is not the signatory for the moon agreement and here the liabilities convention the liability convention is a the convention of international liability for damage caused by the space object it is signatories take the full liability for any damage caused by the uh, the space objects and agree the standard procedure for adjudicating the damage claims the registration convention you know the convention of the registration of the space objects that is launched into the space the expanding year space object to register ex and the convention empowers the UN Secretary General to maintain the register all of the space objects. You must register any space object you are flying to the outer space. The Space Liability Convention is like taken in 1972. Uh, the regime is uh, of the responsibilities like and the general outline of the international tort law in the space are clear. They expanding the um, principles of liabilities for the damage caused by the space objects, including the, the outer space territory. The two scenarios are being invention by the liabilities convention. It's like the space object caused the damage to the surface of the earth or an aircraft or a, or a fight, flight or something. The space object can could cause, uh, you know, the damage some places uh, other than the surface or maybe some outer space or any other celestial bodies that also the possibilities in the in the first scenario the states um, will be strict, strictly liable for any damage caused by space object launched even the face of circumstance they are outside its control if most of the state is responsible for launching the space object then both states will be held jointly or severe or uh, severally it's liable for damage caused in the second situation, the fault-based liability is also applicable. It means the limited principles of explanation and gross negligence or complexity of other party also has to be proved. Well-defined claims, procedures, diplomatic negotiations, claims made by the commission and uh, uh, maybe the other proposers like that and uh, I, I would like to take one case study here it's like a cosmos 954 i think uh, most of the 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 guys who are working on space debris and also this uh, the space uh, threats actually outer space th threats so they must know about the cosmos 954 it was the soviet union's uh, radar ocean reconnaissance satellite it was a powered on board by the nuclear reactor uh, it was the mission was search for search for tracking the United States uh, Navy task. It is uh, fall from the orbit on January 24 of 1978. The contamination it is and it was contaminated by the Canadian territory with the debris from its uh, onboard nuclear reactor. So Canadian Department of External Affairs and referred the Article 5 of Rescue Agreement. The first formal communication with the embassy of uh, Soviet Union on February 18, 1978 concerned the crash of uh, Cosmos 9, 954 in Canadian territory. Canada has fulfilled these duties under the Article 5 and the rescue agreement informed the USSR and uh, it has been identified that debris is coming from Cosmos uh, 954 and the Canadian government is claimed uh, it's like uh, nearly it's like uh, 6 million approximately but uh, but it was settled to 3 million uh, Canadian dollars to damage caused by the cosmos 954 the Canadian government also reserved the right to compensate in for additional damages that may occur in the for future because of the incident any cost inquiry uh, should claims the commission need to be established under the liability convention or any awards made by the claims of the the commission so the regime of the freedoms, the presumptive powers, freedom of states to use of outer space without interference, the enumeration of without the exhaustion to be enjoyed the conformity uh, with the international law, the remote sensing, for example, 
the freedom of space versus the Soviet unity. And the prior cons consent is like a role of bilateral agreements and uh, diluting the prior cons uh, consent is like a 19, uh, 1986 UN resolutions and uh, the state uh, satellite broadcasting. The, pro the satellite broadcasting is the freedom to use versus the prior consent. It's like a uh, UNESCO ITU prior consent is essential and uh, and the content based restriction and also commercial advertising and educational programs and all international organizations if you say like UN committee for the peaceful use of outer space UN CUPOS is like formed in 1958 and uh, UN program for on space applications have been formed and international uh, telecom I mean, telecommunications union has been ITU is taking care of many of the activities, and the International Maritime Satellite Consortium also is taking care of the Maritime Satellite Consortium is taking care of the things, and international and inter Sputniks and international telecommunication satellite organizations and international mobile satellite organizations uh, will uh, take care of their activities. And uh, about the International Academy of uh, Space Law, it's like uh, we we formed an uh, academy. It's like uh, we work on academia and the governance and R and D centers. And uh, that will be like we have an we form we have an organization structured in International Advisory Council and Independent Expert Council and uh, R and D Consultative Committee and Cosmos University. And in future, we are planning to ask the, from the Cosmos universities like the uh, fellowships, like MBAs and doctoral department and postdoctoral department, something like the international the governance is like international board of trustees and leadership. That will be like we have a board of directors and the executive board, the global uh, compact for space uh, administration and uh, the trust funds management. And also the R&D centers is like uh, Space Ecology Institute and the Space Economic Institute and the Space Diplomacy Institute, Space Research Institute and Space Policy Institute and the Space Technology Institute and uh, Space Securities Institute and uh, this may be trying to help uh, some of the aspects here. And uh, International Academy of Space holds a round table with the State Duma and Russian Parliament and also some stakeholders on capacity building. I mean the, the chairman of International Space Academy of Space Law, Dr. Artim Bontrenko, is the chairman who is uh, participating in the, the program. And uh, we are thanks for the space law is a relatively new field of public international law. The company is mainly the co combination of the customs and the territories. While the general principles of uh, public international law are transcending. The space is expanding accordingly with the subject to be regulated at its main task since it is an interruption of uh, ensure the free and unimpeded and also non-discriminatory access of uh, humankind into the space. Although the founding territories of space law define the activities in this area, there are current issues uh, that have been arisen. Uh, it is necessary to review whether the how these issues are incorporated in this legal framework. The present articles, uh, I mean, like uh, discussion, its uh, aim to provide the holistic uh, understanding of uh, current trends of challenges uh, in a space law. In the special focus on issues such as space tourism, new space, and uh, debris and climate change. The aim will be achieved through overview of uh, founding territories of uh, space law. Uh, uh, and the subsequent review of the current issues, the way of existing literature di discussed and inter interprets them. The goal is both present of emerging issues of the space law and existing existing law and provide the programmatic solutions and uh, the highlight the prospects uh, of the le legislative the developments within the the core substance of international space lies based on the five territories, I mean, international territories, as I already described uh, about that. And uh, here, what I'm going to see is like the overview of uh, uh, five even space territories. Like uh, Sputnik 1 acted as like an initiator to establish the outer space legal regime in uh, 1957, since it was the first uh, yet the artificial satellite that have been ever been launched 
The de this development occurs during the International Geophysical Year, and uh, which is the strength of the international community involvement in the outer space. The international community, in order to cope with the increasing danger of military activities in outer space, uh, adopted the resolution of 1721 of uh, 20th December 1961 to promote the promote and safeguard the peaceful use of uh, outer space while United Nations become the main forum for the discussion on these issues. Since it is a structure elevates the competition and distrust among the countries, the cultivates uh, countries that has the potential lead of subsequent agreement. The constitutions of the UN has been beneficial to establishment to, to have the ad hoc committee in 1958 and uh, uh, since it allows a broad spectrum of activities, this committee has acted as an essential step for the development of international space law and the contribution was acknowledged. And the only year after the function of the establishment of the UN Committee for the Peaceful Use of Outer Space, UN Coopers, as a permanent member in, within the UN, the, the customary the law of outer space territory the Soviet Union's uh, and also uh, USA's uh, space-related activities initiated the creation and uh, the development of space law, including the, the customary law and also the solution resolutions that uh, that were adopted by the, the General Assemblies, such as, you know, 110 by 1947 of resolution that was made. And uh, these resolutions uh, constitute the pre-contractual stage of uh, space law and reflect the the customary rules as well defined as the principles employed a state of governing the exploration and exploitation of the outer space these fundamental customary principles that were being divested by the legal subcommittee of u coopers and uh, uh, are reflected as interpret of outer space territory ost the principles including like the, uh, the principle of uh, freedom of uh, exploration and use of outer space and the the principle of benefits of interest of all mankind and article one and uh, the the article two is like the principle on non-appropriation and the uh, the principle of using the moon and other celestial body exclusively for the peaceful purpose of article four and um, the principle of uh, international cooperation and the assistance in article five and uh, the principle of responsibility of national activities in outer space in article six the principle of liabilities of uh, damage in the cost by the state of space objects is article 7 the space object of uh, registration of the space object will be in the concern not less important these of the principles articles 4 uh, which has been like uh, other than the peaceful use of this territory forbids the parties that can be carrying the nuclear weapon or any kind of the mass destruction in orbit on on the earth and install such as the weapon or the celestial bodies such as stations such as the weapons in any manner the special attention should be drawn in article 9 which have been even incorporated with the forward and the backward the environmental protection it also reflects the limits of uh, territory when the consul when the consultants uh, are potentially the harmful active the activity wherein the made obligatory the overall ost is the one is the one of the unique outs, unique outstanding of lawmaking of territories in the public and uh, the international law the where all major space countries are the signatory parties in it and it also the resembles of the the legal uh, governing of antarctica uh, it is the regular uh, i mean it's like in a significantly contributed to the development of article 13 and uh, of un charter and served as like a springboard in the subsequent territories which uh, elaborated upon amplified in constant since then space has been evolved evolved accordingly to the space related activity in order to ensure that carried out for the peaceful manner in order to provide the holistic understanding for the outer space legal regime is like a brief overview of uh, four subsequent territories as follows and that is the this will be the essential for acknowledging the issues covered the existing the framework answered by the questions and it's not to need or need not to be reformed. And the rescue agreement, the nineteen in nineteen sixty eight, the rescue agreement specified Article five of OST is deals with most almost exclusive with the 
return of uh, astronauts and space objects the assistance to the astronauts the obligation to inform the, the states of even secretary general uh, of any uh, phenomena uh, liable uh, to constitute any danger or to the life or health of the astronauts in space the astronauts have the obligations to help other astronauts but the country uh, it is uh, not compulsory that render them assistance actually thus the uh, provisions of the agreement is uh, explicitly integrate the issues of assistance to the uh, astronauts in the territories under uh, article and uh, the beyond the jurisdiction of the space parties they they do not uh, address the issues of assistance in space nor the uh, expenditure for concerning the rescue and return of uh, astronauts overall agreement enshrines in, uh, the immunity of astronauts and uh, establish uh, establish the rescue procedures in the event of the accidents the liability convention is like uh, in 1972 uh, of uh, liability convention the liability convention is uh, essentially an um, elaboration of article 7 of uh, OST uh, and uh, the addresses the key issues uh, where they previously left unanswered the convention provides the definitions of uh, key terms in order to determine ex extents of the issues the establish of the two very uh, two versions of liabilities uh, in on the uh, another hand uh, the strict or the absolute is a liability they applies in the case of the damage of uh, surface of the earth or uh, the aircraft is in the flight by the space object uh, while the other hand the fault biased the liabilities appeals uh, applies in, in the event of uh, some damage caused elsewhere uh, the other than the surface of the earth so under the strict liabilities provision state always liable for damages caused by the, the space object without the need or uh, need to prove the damage is um, is the consequences of the fault of uh, launching the state in contrast uh, under the uh, fault uh, based uh, liability regime it is necessary uh, in um, in a search of the fault whether the it has been caused by the act or the omission done or with the uh, intent of cause the damage of the part of uh, climate state or negligent or from accidental or unforeseeable event the final the liability lies even the case is uh, legitimate activities while the term of the space object includes in the the components of space object as well as the launch vehicle and its parts the registration of convention is a uh, registration convention is like uh, this uh, in 1975 has been framed it's like the similarly the uh, registration of convention has been closed ties with the um, 1967 of OST and uh, the significant the articles uh, 8 with the uh, record of the uh, obligations of launching the state of register of the space object when it is launched into the earth orbit or beyond informed to the, the secretary general of United Nations for such registrations thus the convention establishes two different ways that is the space object must register with the specific information either national registry or in the registry for maintained by the un secretary general the registration serves the twofold purposes contributing the minimum minimization of the weapon that we're placing into the orbit and a peaceful handle of outer space given the difficulty to identify the spacecraft otherwise it's worth nothing to according to the line lansen it's like registration establishes link between the space object and any personal abroad and the the particular state of the purpose of the jurisdiction with the control of return of astronauts set out by arts article 7 sorry article 5 and article 8 of ost the however the implementation of the convention is uh, highly influenced by the reluctance of the states to disclose the real mission especially in case of uh, military purposes and this leads the widespread mistrust and insecurity this ambition this ambience in, in enhanced by the term as soon as possible uh, as soon as practicable practicable uh, you can say like uh, that refers the responsibility of the states to send some particular information as of the space object which will have been registered uh, which leaves us like a small window to send them information that about the after the launch 
the moon agreement if you something if you speak about the moon agreement in 1979 the moon agreement is the latest international space territories that was adopted under the the perception that use of uh, use of the moon was imminent after a fibrous moon landing or in the 1969 unlike other territories these agreements uh, came into the force on 11 july in 1984 but it is not uh, ratifically by the uh, deshi countries since they don't want to renounce the the rights or uh, compel themselves uh, to the share the technologies for uh, explore, explore exploitation activities as the moon agreement is provides the agreement is the result of a compromise between the developing countries and the space faring countries by accepting the principle of common heritage of mankind as simple uh, uh, along with the confirmation the um, the freedom of scientific investigation explore, exploration and use of moon are tried to all in the states the larger part of the agreement is not controversial since it is reiterates the general rules of uh, the rules and the principles of ost is like such as the such as use of the celestial bodies for exclusive peaceful purpose the obligations to assist the astronauts and international liabilities the controversial part of the convention is solely limited to the establishment of international regime to govern the exploration exploitation and also the natural resources this is reflected by the concept called common heritage for of mankind this concept refers to common management of areas out, outside the national jurisdictions within a, a equitable sharing of the benefits derived by those resources dispute the dispute the level of the participation of exploitation activities it is a worth that uh, nothing that agreement uh, outlines of the basic principles and uh, the purpose of uh, international regime but without the establishing which leaves upon uh, the states to uh, structure these rules after the uh, exploitation so become feasible all in in all the given the plenty levels of rectifications and also the agreement based on the bids and uh, its members and disputes the fact of uh, the content is uh, reasonable the moon agreement is a uh, herald uh, that with uh, an uh, end of the era of uh, space law making the globally accepted uh, so during the 1980s and uh, 1990s united states united nations returned to the adoption of the resolutions of the general assembly in this way like most most prominent resolutions are like uh, 1986 is remote sensing principles and in 1992 is like nuclear power sources principles and in 1996 is like a, a space benefits declaration and the resolutions is combined with the less active engagement of uh, even cupos uh, regarding on development of new space rules and reflect uh, the soft law approach this this approach this approach you know, promotes the adoptions of uh, you know the legal documents and such as de declarations that not legally uh, bidding and uh, uh, but they have not succeed i mean they they have succeeded with uh, formulating the common ground and understanding the controversial or difficult situations to handle among the international community in addition that it facilitates the development of space law uh, in the line of uh, technological developments uh, that have been contributed to the expansion uh, of uh, use of the applications in space related activities and technologies which have been increasing the capabilities uh, of uh, new states and actors become necessary thus the soft lies approach is the uh, crucial for the development of the space law which have as well as the branches uh, other branches of the law since they it may have later it will constitute the first steps towards the, the creation of the legally um, binding territories following the presentations is like an uh, outer space like uh, regime legal regime that's um, uh, throughout the preparatory stage and law making era and software era, this is clear of uh, some kind of the existing framework and uh, you can see like the challenges what the challenges not had it's like ost is uh, along with the agreement of and, uh, conventions that sh the shed like on the particular aspects of the territory that has been successful in establishing a legal regime that um, maintained the peace and uh, 
or in outer space. However, the adaptation of OST is already counting the several decades which set uh, and emerging beyond the effective managing the current space law. The need of the new space law rules according to the um, Trochetti is like is been driven the true factors like uh, technological developments and increasing the capabilities of specific launching into the satellites into the orbit, rise of uh, new commercial activities and the emerging new legal and technical issues that not foreseen are considered uh, relevant to time of the uh, drafting the even space territories. And uh, a few of the current issues of regarding the space light is in, for instance, currently including the increasing the role of private sectors in the outer space, which caused the review of the uh, current policies and legalizations. And uh, uh, the use of the domestic laws and also the constant needs of the own legal reform. In order to encounter the broader engagement with the commercial space innovation, the adequacy of existing international liabilities regime to protect the space tourists in the event of um, space vehicle accidents and the, the, the increasing use of the, the space for military activities challenging scavenging of the space, deb uh, space debris. With the focus of active remedial methods and the protection of space assets and the legal regime of pretending the anti-satellite weapon assets from missions and also it is invite the um, the opinion of jurists from the law school acceptably of uh, outer space territory and all state without the rectifi ratification and uh, and universal obedience with the space law without demur these indicative issues highlight the multi level of dimension of the space spaced legal issues the remainder of the articles of the two key issues uh, you know, the things are discussing here it's like current uh, space law the namely for privatization and the commercialization of outer space law with the uh, for, with the space tourism the regulation of the space orbital space debris and the environmental aspects such as the climate change and um, the commercial human space flight in the new space here while ex exploitation of uh, the space is still embryonically level. Uh, these are have some new developments that gradually taken place. Thus, we have the new era of a new space law during which is the outer space operations, which will be traditionally conducted by the government agencies, are open to public and private sector. The race of private space flight industry is directly related to the emerging the terms of the new space, or uh, alternatively the commercial or entrepreneurial space or astropreneurship or something like. So the space frontiers are such as the defines as new space. The people, business, and organization working in the open, the uh, the the space frontier to the human space settlements or human settlements through economic developments. Likewise, the most appropriate definition is the private manned space flight. According to this, France one Dun Dun is in a flight of humans intent to enter to the outer space at their own expense. Or that the another private person to of uh, private entity or conduct some private entities or both will be commercial space activities, something like that. So in despite of this thing, new space is defined as a private manned space flight. And according to the NASA's presentations, uh, we they were been turning out the point of history of space exploration and development of new industries have been born uh, to use the space in many different ways. Uh, more, more and more, the states are undertaking the uh, space activities themselves, or uh, authorizing the private enterprise to do, do something like SpaceX or some other companies, um, which, uh, which increasing in some of the cases we can say like uh, uh, it leads some new approach of the space lights, uh, uh, highlighting the need of reforms of the law. Let's catch up the new into the reality, and especially which may take into account as soon as all countries able to carry out the exploitation mission. And due to lawyer launch cost, the rise of uh, private sector involvement began in 1990s due to the technological maturity and uh, significant benefits and uh, decreasing the cost uh, along with the government needs uh, and to reduce the space expenditures. The benefit from the commercial use of the technologies related to the outer space significant that they range from the field to field of the telecommunications, remote sensing and this uh, remote sensing to the space tourism and space navigation like gps something the commercial the private human access to the outer space 
is one of the most imminent and also they are hard to handle the topics which are defined as any commercial activity offering customer direct or indirect experience with the space travel space tourism started this a concept of uh, launch of Dennis Dito, you know, the Dennis Dito to the Russian part of the International Space Station in 2001. While while launching to the launch by launch of the scaled composite, the spaceship one in 2004 marked the begging to reusable the spaceships. Since then, the commercial use of the space they evolved the subsequent raison of major legal questions. The new reality uh, requires the regulations of the both private and uh, public sector. Uh, of the uh, legislation uh, in in order to address this uh, central issues such as the the launch permits and restrictions which the state which may be imposed for reasons of national securities and the countries are begging to adopt the national legislations of their outer space uh, activities with the pioneer uh, pioneers using the us and australia until today the most of the activities are uh, conducted by the government space agencies like uh, nasa and russian the state corporation like under uh, Roscosmos and European Space Agency and uh, Japanese, uh, I mean ja JAXA, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and in collaboration with the private companies. The outer space uh, legal reform, uh, legal regime was drafted at the time that the space activity were purely scientific. Uh, there are only the actors of exploration and exploitation, where the government hints the all territories address only the states. Nevertheless, the entrepreneurs are operating somebody is like a individual or private agencies not like so thus the commercial operations is concerned with the principle of ost and uh, with the liability of convention according to the provi provisions of ost is like outer space is not subject to the national appropriation to plan the of the sovereignty but uh, by means of the use of the occupation by other means the the most important regulation of about the space actors is like article 6 on ost uh, which uh, which states that the state parties uh, to the territory shall bear the international responsibility for all national activities in the outer space, whether such activities are carried by the government agency or by a non-governmental entity. It is also clarified that in uh, inappropriate, uh, the state of bears the responsibility to authorization and supervision of all activities of non-governmental entities. The article established the dual system which the private actors uh, private uh, activities are permissible. And but at the same time, is the responsibility lies with the state as the results finding the consciousness between the conflict of the claims of Soviet Union and uh, you know, United States. But correctively, in Article Seven, in the launching a state in the international uh, liable, for, liable for the damages for object that may be caused to another state parties of OST, it is the uh, it, it 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 retains the the you know. Uh, jurisdictions and uh, control over the space object uh, is like in a personal it's like some of the things are current legal regime is like the main core uh, core of uh, commercial activities but it's up to the interpretation and uh, national legislations of each state that uh, to clarify the details the most uh, prevailing the view of the states they remain legally responsible for the case of activities the national private commercial entrepreneurs yeah, and uh, the access of the space was controlled by the state therefore they have should take the appropriate measures and uh, for licensing and supervisions of the private users acting their own territory uh, either uh, per case or more general in basis the appropriate the approach of legal aspects of liabilities uh, a light uh, light of uh, private entrepreneurs and demanding the one as discussing the about the liabilities convention is the uh, distinguishes between the strict and fault biased uh, be fault based liability but it's not the address of the issues the who is the the owner and who is the responsible for what and uh, what is the space object and the cost the in, this uh, cause the damage the incident and uh, the uh, i mean according to the convention the the launch state has been held liable for any damage caused by the any space objects and but it's the light of uh, light of the private involvement the issue is not so simple there are many uncertainties regarding to the terms of the defining the launch state launching state which such as like who is undertaking the launch and who is the liability if it is a private launch the operator and who is the territory and the territory that used for the launch is exclusive or reserved rights of the states but which is the launch takes place outside the territory of any state such as like a high on the seas nevertheless we since uh, that the territory addresses only the states states uh, states are the only one 
states that carry the full burden of international liabilities according to the states of the space object registry and such as simple leaves of the countries they exposed to the high risk of high compensation unless the space unless this national space legislations provide the specific regulation such as the obligations uh, for the liable insurance and uh, and also the effect to this uh, guard themselves against the liabilities in more specific uh, context is like the issue of the space tourism also raises the challenges the questions about the liabilities issues since the space tourism is refer the only are the issues included the astronauts according to the article 5 and uh, of the OST of astronauts is like uh, invoice of mankind while it, a lot of a lot of them of the special rights is like uh, a lot of the rescue agreement uh, also the focus on uh, return of uh, personal and also the assisting to the astronauts and who is conducting the activities for behind i mean the benefit uh, and uh, and in the interest of all the countries in context of unclear in the space tourist uh, fall under the right rescue even though there is no explicit provisions uh, and it also be considered like its own so who, who's over the outer space the article 31 at the vnis convention is uh, regarding the interpretation of the charities leads to its uh, conclusions according to this article the charity shall interpreted in a good faith and according with the uh, ordinary means it has been given in the territory in the context in the high and light and the purple which is essentially the profits unreasonable results and uh, you can say like it is an under highlights the elementary considerations of the humanity but the on other hand the uh, international space station partner states and the u.s legislations and make the expert distinct between the professional astronauts and also the space flight participant which reinforces the view that the rescue agreement should not apply uh, to the space flight participants even though this is the remarkable difference of opinion the the uh, the prevailing the theory is an uh, is that in humanitarian and uh, considering the entire the applicability of the agreement and existing general humanitarian obligations to assist the humans to distress or sufficiency without the qualification invoice of mankind however it is extremely useful for international community to equate it at the state of this human space flights and also the safe flight participants and the relationship with the rescue agreement which is lead to the clarifications and the provisions that eliminating the conflict of laws and practice at uh, at the at the regional level of main regula regulations for uh, space activities in la with the european union legal framework it's notable the provisions regarding to the data protection and general economic rules and it may the main concern here is like uh, uh, prevent the outer space from becoming the area of the conflict and it's also in the process of European Union issue the draft code of conduct of outer space activities in 2008 on national level of adaptation of national space legislation is directly linked to demand of uh, private space commerce and uh, also it is uh, mainly concerned with the issues of liabilities and supervision and uh, of uh, private actors mainly the US and UK Australia and USSR I mean they have developed the national space legislations while china and india indonesia and thailand are in the process they made it and uh, for instance uh, in the us the adaptation of uh, commercial space launch act the which established the licensing regime and addressed the authorization uh, supervision of the liabilities of uh, commercial operations and the spurring the private aerospace competition and entrepreneurship is called the space act 2015 constitutes the update of uh, commercial ex space legislations which allow the u.s citizens to engage in more commercial explorations and also exploitations of the space resources even though the debate whether the recognition of the ownership of space resources in the act of sovereignty is violates ost or not but uh, due to the legal vacuum by left by the territories about the commercial space activities still ongoing debate is whether they, these activities operate within a lawless or not a business environment the fact is that the space have been acknowledged as a part of the common heritage of man that raises the questions which is the whether the space should continue to be defined or that whether it is a definition should be changed to allow the private property in the space the principle of non appropriation is like uh, uh, is said that the barrier away of the thriving thriving the space economy 
since the absence of uh, explicitly uh, guaranteed the proprietary rights uh, deter investors and uh, especially in the case of celestial bodies whose mining is possible. The need of uh, diverse uh, rules of regulates of intellectual property uh, in the light uh, of, uh, of the increase in the commercialization of the outer space and the emerging need of determine whether they are existing the copyright law should uh, applicable to satellite activities or additional issues or uh, ocean link being viewed by legal framework or intellectual property rating of outer space activity with the maximum conflict and, uh, and the maximum minimum conflict and uh, sorry the minimum conflict and the maximum progress on, on the other hand it will you can say like the present framework use the intellectual property rights in the space activities suffers from the several um, uh, inequities and inequalities and ultimate to the protect the conflicts with the founding the principles of both uh, the national law, intellectual property law and international law either the way of uh, OST is the provision is the is the state uh, uh, that can be the fine tunes this issues allows the creative the interpretation through the extension of the national intellectual property rights uh, to encompass the space activities and uh, inventions especially the field of the patents and copyrights however the different points of the views of interpretations in the law national law is like the hamper the the applicable of uh, international property rights the main issue is here is uh, the, the the continue to lack of uh, legal bidding of definitions uh, of appropriate state and also the uh, space object in the light of the commercial commercialization of the outer space which concerns with the, the applicability of space and here the space land air law both are especially within within the liability context and the positive setup uh, that uh, that could be an adaptation of the multilateral agreement to cover the transfer of uh, supervisory duties and uh, uh, the authority to between the states uh, in the event of change of ownership and space object in the space also an uh, improvement to uh, would be in uh, the adaptation of the space traffic management under the uh, registrations of a convention regime along with the uh, need for the formal relationship with, between the space traffic and uh, air traffic control and according to the Lael and Larson is like uh, the establishment of uh, <coughs> the boundary between air and airspace and outer space alongside of the need of harmonization between the use of air, air space and the transit to the from outer space that would be remarkable in years to our come the uh, the international community, the space companies and uh, legislatures are uh, with help to the play a crucial role in handling the complicated legal issues that will uh, raise from the increase in the commercial human space flight and subsequent uh, questions of uh, liabilities in the events of the accidents. The private entrepreneurs are uh, anticipated in the increase of the shared of, uh, uh, share, I mean, the space operations in the cooperation with the government agencies but it cannot be a, a expected uh, to take over the space in the medium term it's like uh, there will be like several factors that uh, play of essential roles uh, in this assumption such as more more the cost of such trips are less inadequate of the legal framework since it's like unclear where the space uh, legislation supplies nevertheless the space uh, business will continue to evolve in especially if uh, we, uh, we take into the account of uh, Walter as uh, so the common is like the past uh, has been shown in the cutthroat of the competitions legal uncertainty have been seldom discouragement of uh, entrepreneurs such as trying to something new in the light of uh, this uh, development it's uh, an uh, absolute absolute uh, necessity for international space law to establish the balance between the respect uh, of uh, main principles of the space law that need to support the private uh, initiatives the environmental uh, aspects of uh, space law this is like uh, most important about environmental aspects of the space law and the space debris the space uh, presence is like variety of uh, environmental issues to which must respond of uh, which of the most severe those uh, might take place into the launch the first with the environmental risk the states and according to the article 9 of ost how obligations avoid the harmful contaminations of the outer space that is the forward contaminations as well advertised the change in the earth results from the introduction of extraterrestrial matter the, i mean the backward contamination uh, and it's like the article based on which is the status uh, states have obligations to adopt appropriate measures and therefore act to prevent 
the changes in the space environment. You can look at that Article 9 uh, along with the Articles the 1 and Article 3 and Article 4 and Article 8 outlines the uh, core environmental protections, the importance of maintaining the space environment as the among the others. The directly linked to the contributions in the solving the environmental issues on the earth and thus the scope of the current analysis of crucial role of uh, space observations and protection of environment and along with the, the most imminent environmental space issues. The space debris which is discussed uh, of uh, uh, course of space debris they are not uh, no means of uh, the only the environmental issues related to the space exploration since other issues uh, such as uh, the nuclear contaminations and forward and backward contaminations and equal equal importance is uh, uh, it isn't common you know like uh, to know the uh, numerous uh, space related activities can serve the effective tool for the protection of the environment such as the satellites that monitor the earth environment and providing the data and uh, uh, about the i mean like uh, complicating the global changes of uh, earth systems and early warning systems and natural disasters uh, these uh, these systems are able to mitigate and uh, the consequences of the natural disasters through the coordination of technological space capabilities and uh, capacities and uh, this uh, state uh, satellite observations plays in a uh, crucial role of filling the gap uh, in the data space and region assist the uh, understanding the functions of our natural environment the collection of uh, the collection of the global data through atmosphere the climate and hydrological and ecological applications uh, and it is in uh, significant contributions in developing and implementing the means of to solve the environmental or human problems and uh, apart from this data you know like uh, the space technologies plays uh, the crucial role in sustaining the earth resources for example space uh, observations they help in the securing the freshwater resources as well as the forest management climate change and disaster and risk management for instance like one of the most uh, important initiatives like earth monitoring and uh, climate change and the global monitoring of environment uh, of the securities like GMS and uh, which is collect the data and provide the information enhance, enhances like the, the areas of uh, climate change and adaptations of uh, adaptation and mitigations of policies and the emergency responses services is like land and um, uh, I mean like uh, land and uh, marine monitoring services and atmospheric services these space applications are only the indicative of important of the space technologies for improving life in uh, of earth the increase of uh, space activity has been created and uh, and vertebral junkyard of uh, orbital space debris is consisting of uh, a defunction of satellites as well as the components and uh, tools lost during the extravehicular activities and as uh, space debris can create the navigation hazard to operational spacecraft satellites especially in a geostationary orbit where their wonder the you know the increase in the possibility of collide and with the functioning satellites or interface with the, the transmission the the peculiarity of these issues uh, uh, according to the vicari's observations is like uh, the most uh, threats posed by the environmental hazards in uh, outer space do not affect the particular operations which causes them but they endanger the other space and even terrestrial activities the number of increasing the orbit is like a number of increased uh, number of the objects that has been increasing the orbit that made into the case of uh, space debris real time problem. Thus, most it will be the, the crowded with the more than a one million near uh, the objects that is in uh, orbiting, increasing the risk of radioactive contamination that also the harmful the substance. The issue is this like the space debris is the imminent. Uh, one of the most uh, evidenced by the collisions of the two satellites in orbit in the first time in 2009 the 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 culminant points is like if uh, enough the space debris accumulate it will be virtually impossible to operate the spacecraft in in earth orbit and also the neither the united nations is the space territories are um, the most uh, recent uh, space law the provisions are deacons of the address the space law problem with uh, efficiency is efficiency is like it's recovered this is uh, in inadequacy is like in related to the uncertainty in case of the liabilities of damage caused by the space law and the debris the lack of uh, legally binding the territories under the 1972 the liabilities convention uh, the launching state is liable for a damage of the causing the, the this uh, persons or uh, the property on board on the uh, if any other state 
is if the damage is due to the negligence the assumptions raised to two important issues like on one hand it's like difficulty difficult difficulty to provide the negligence and also uh, since the space traffic rules do not uh, systematic exist and also on the other hand the insubordinationable problem is like uh, the deter determine the main and the most of the cases who is the responsible taking into the account is uncertainty of the origin and the most debris the the absence of uh, legal uh, bidding definitions of uh, the other issues through the widely accepted and uh, that the term uh, compromises everything for from the small parts of uh, to the dead satellites the registration convention is also the uh, has the relevance uh, since the available information can be an essential in the case of the collisions between the space objects and provide the identification however this convention intends the problem is uh, terminology that leave to to enough the space of interoperability space objects uh, something like so you can say here the some of the guidelines the limitations of the space debris released uh, during the normal operations the minimization of the uh, potential breakups during the operational phase and uh, the limitation of probability of uh, accidental collision in orbit uh, the avoidance of uh, you know like uh, intentional distractions and also harmful activities the minimization of potential post mission breakups uh, resulting from the stored energy and we can say like the limitations of the long term presence of uh, the the spacecraft and launch vehicle orbit in stages of leo low earth orbit and region that after the end of their mission uh, the limitation has been like uh, it is an implementation of those uh, guidelines it is like voluntarily in the by its nature it is like uh, they have been adopt the organization uh, changes uh, and also they have to adopt the actors in the outer space the implementation of the guidelines and also the space traffic management is necessary to take into the account limit the maneuvering capabilities and their high speed the international uh, i mean how even cupos is uh, the space debris mitigation uh, guidelines does not provide the holistic solutions to the issue but even though we have constitute constitute uh, the remarkable step towards and minimizing the risk related to the space debris this would could the create of the basis of legally uh, binding their negotiations some of the teams in the, the the process of establishing the binding rules the issue is the one the two major factors was like the first is so space powers did not want to develop the rules and jointly the jointly with the states not involved in the space activities and secondly they reluctant to bind themselves and the technical modification necessity to the harmonization with the guidelines the one of the possible solutions of the space debris issues is establishment of the piece of legislation of similar to the space law of slavage is under the maritime law which is the eliminate any possibilities or removing any country's debris without the permission is uh, considered illegal since uh, united nations uh, uh, space territories regain is not the termination of uh, jurisdiction or control over the space object the major improvement could be the review of uh, registration of convention in uh, so that the notification is concerned the exploration of uh, breaking the registration register break up the registered space object would must come become a compulsory the part of the solution will be the issues that can be an on orbit service service uh, on orbit service satellite servicing and most vital solutions is like a day the space debris issues will be the unclear and also some of the things is like the clear uh, universal distinction between the functional satellite and also uh, non functional space debris that is adoption of the legally but in the definitions all in terms is the possibility as like you can say like uh, it is uh, necessary to consider uh, the remediation measures and uh, especially the since the technological development makes the distraction of uh, thermal decomposition of the space debris are pragmatic solutions uh, the main issue with the remediation measures you can say like apart from the high cost the difference between the suggestions made and uh, once we have been the prevailing the theories and uh, that will the simplest and the most economic method with the dealing with the space debris and preventive measures through the design of the spacecraft and instead of remediation some measures the different approach is like uh, the most effective procedure is removing the satellites from the outer space is bring them down and uh, through the control uh, the the reentry of uh, the uh, the uh, the fully fun i mean the control reentry of there will be fulfilled their function overall the preference is like resolve the legal the questions that provide the holistic approach it's needed actually as the human you know like we have the presence uh, the presence in the outer space the law is govern the human activities in the environment become the increasing in the analysis of forecasting to provide and 
so the though the analysis have been very clear of uh, uh, substance of continuation in this peaceful uh, space exploration and um, uh, exploitations in the in the international cooperation as uh, commercial use of the space in order to tackle the issue the in, in, in the encouragement and also the harmonization of domestic space le legislations are essential to creation of so to secure the environment uh, for the space activities uh, regarding the legisl legislation the framework uh, applicable to them so, so domestic legislation should uh, have the however been harmonized to the following the international developments of international space law and uh, ensuring the uh, applicabilities of uh, outer space territory that will be stepped into the right direction and uh, since it will be to provide the common legal foundation for all state and enhance the compliances and furthermore it is often essence the prevention of the long term of the space activities though it's like non 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 binding norms actually so it's like the environmental concerns as the challenging task at last is like what is nothing there is no, there is a strong uh, strike in the balance between the need of a reverse and reform the territories the environmental constraints uh, it is challenging task at last is the uh, you know like uh, the alternatively the possibilities of uh, absence in uh, general agreement is like might lead the existing league work uh, we try to support with the activities and uh, framing the legal activities and we, we try to educate with through the international academy of space law and we i uh, just i want to move to the next slide about uh, our international academy of space law activities and uh,